Welcome to your writing tutorial. This tutorial will help you write a paragraph response to a prompt from any discipline, math, science, social studies, English, and more. As you watch, feel free to pause to take notes, rewind to understand important details, and look at your assignment and writing as you attend to the example in the video. Ready? Let's go. Today we will explore sequence writing. This is the third video on this writing topic. If you have not seen the first two videos, you may wish to review them. Remember, in sequence writing, we are talking about a writing task that may ask you to explain numerous steps, explain different ways, or explain different impacts. Today, we'll be exploring different ways of accomplishing the same basic goal. And we're looking at a sample prompt in math. Imagine that you have conducted a survey that compares two quantities. Explain your survey results. Then, using your two quantities, show and explain the five different methods of comparing them. Make sure you are clear and thorough in your explanation. So, your teacher has asked you to enter a practical situation and apply your knowledge of mathematics. Imagine that you've conducted a survey and explain how you would assess those results. Let's think about how to explore this in a paragraph. Each paragraph response to a prompt like this contains some necessary components, and you should make sure that you contain them in your paragraph. First, you must select voice intelligently. We've discussed this in other tutorials. Every time you read a prompt, you must determine what voice your teacher wishes you to use. Let's take a look at the prompt again. The prompt always includes clues to the voice that you should use through your paragraph, and you should not shift from that voice unless you have cause. This prompt includes the word you and your several times. That means the teacher is asking you to think about yourself and what you would do. That means that the first person voice is appropriate. If somebody comes up to me and says, hey, how would you do this? I respond, I would do this in this way. That is the first person voice. This prompt has shown you that the first person voice is appropriate for writing the paragraph, so use it. Secondly, with necessary components, you should write a topic sentence that restates and answers the prompt. We've discussed this in previous videos. Make sure that you do not simply restate the prompt, but answer it in the topic sentence as well. This prompt is a bit complex and may actually require you to expand your topic sentence idea into multiple sentences. But let's understand the prompt. Always consider the prompt carefully when you're writing your topic sentence. Imagine that you have conducted a survey that compares two quantities. That's not really requesting anything. It's just asking you to put yourself in a situation. Explain your survey results. That is asking you to do something. Then, using your two quantities, show and explain the five different methods of comparing them. That is also showing you to do something. So those two sentences are key in understanding how to frame the topic sentence. Let's look at, then, using your two quantities, show and explain the five different methods of comparing them. I could write a first sentence like this. I could survey the students in the lunchroom on their milk preference and use five different methods to compare the results. In this way, I'm telling the teacher a little bit of the answer. I will survey students in the lunchroom on their milk preference. And I'm also talking about the five different methods to compare the results that my math teacher wants me to discuss. Of course, the prompt asks for a little bit more. It asks for me to explain my results, so I will add a sentence. When I served, surveyed them, 100 preferred chocolate and 50 preferred regular milk. These two sentences answer the prompt and make sure that my teacher understands that not only have I understood the task, but that I can answer it. Remember, when writing a topic sentence, always restate and answer the prompt. The next necessary component of a paragraph like this is transition language that shows each different approach. So, here are some subsequent sentences after my first two. In comparing the results, first I could use ratios, which is a part-to-part -part comparison. In this situation, the two parts are those who preferred chocolate and those who preferred regular. Therefore, the ratio is 100 to 50, which reduces to 2 to 1. These are my transition words, first and therefore. 
The first transition word, the word first, indicates that this is the first of five methods that I will discuss. The word therefore is a transition that shows reasoning. And it shows that my results can be reduced or can lead to a conclusion of 150. That shows reasoning. I've used two different transitions to show different thought. Of course, in sequence writing, the word first is key. As I continue, we can see the continuation of this same transition language. Second, I could use fractions, which is a part to whole comparison. In this situation, the part is the group that preferred chocolate and the whole is the total number of students. Therefore, the fraction that liked chocolate is 100 over 150, which reduces to 2 over 3. I've used the same sort of transition language in this second example. And, of course, as in good sequence writing, I've used first for my first and second for my second. The last necessary component of a paragraph like this is a strong subject. In fact, a series of strong subjects. A strategy of strong subjects, if you will. In my model answer, I've decided that my voice is first person. But therefore, my strong subjects are quite often the word I. I is a strong subject because it is something that can act in the sentence. Students often use words like reason or way or method. These words cannot effectively lead a verb. They cannot effectively lead a sentence. Words like I, words like you, even words like ratio, part, whole, or fraction, which are mathematics terms, are strong and specific subjects. They clearly direct a sentence. Make sure you are picking strong words to lead your sentences. Strong subjects lead to strong verbs and often lead to strong sentences. Let's review the necessary components of an effective answer to this mathematics prompt. Be sure to select voice intelligently. First, second, or third person voice will be dictated by the prompt that you have read. Write a topic sentence that restates and answers the prompt. Do not merely restate but answer the prompt clearly. Use transition language that shows each different approach and use strong subjects matched with that transition language. If you can do all four of these steps, then you can write an effective mathematics paragraph that reflects on mathematic processes and uses strong sequence writing.